uh, this section, uh, today section. And uh, as I understand, the most of talks are related with groups. And uh, so today is a day of groups. And uh, the first speaker is uh, Ken Xian. And uh, he is a great expert in combinatorics. At least I know his paper in uh, concerning codes, strong irregular graphs, finite field, and uh, association scheme, and so on. So today he will speak about Cameron Libre line classes in a projected group. Please start. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I would like to thank Elena for inviting me to give this talk. And uh, so the title of my talk is uh, Cameron Liberal Line Classes in PG3Q. Uh, this is a joint work with uh, Tao Feng, Koji Momihara, uh, Morgan Rogers, and uh, Han Ning Zhou. Uh, the paper was published already. It was uh, published in uh, Advances in Math, uh, July 2021. Okay, so let's go through some definitions. So. I think for these wordings, uh, the, uh, everyone knows what uh, PG3Q is, so I can be brief. So uh, uh, PG3Q stands for uh, Projective Geometry Three-Dimensional uh, over GFQ. So uh, there's a, an underlying four-dimensional vector space over GFQ. Uh, so, so that four-dimensional vector space is called V. Uh, so the points of uh, PG3Q are the one-dimensional subspaces V, and the lines are two-dimensional subspaces, and so on. So that's just uh, the definition of uh, PG3Q, and you can define PGNQ similarly uh, for any n bigger than equal to one. Uh, so one concept I need is uh, something called uh, a spread of PG3Q. So a spread is a set of lines. And uh, so this set of lines, uh, any two of them, uh, uh, they are parallel and uh, together they partition uh, the set of uh, points of PG3Q. So that's the definition of uh, uh, a spread. So there are many, many spreads of PG3Q. Also, uh, uh, the number of lines in a spread should be uh, Q squared plus one here uh, for, for PG3Q, okay? So uh, once we have that, we can define uh, what uh, we mean by uh, a Cameron liberal line class. So these are uh, these were defined uh, first in 1982 by Peter Cameron and Bob Liebler. And uh, so a Cameron liberal line class is a set of lines. Uh, let's call that. <coughs> excuse me. Let's call that set L, uh, such that you take any spread. Uh, so remember. A spread is also a set of lines. So any spread uh, intersect this L, uh, the intersection size is a fixed number. Let's call it X. Okay. So uh, so again, the Cameron Lieber line class uh, is a set of lines uh, such that every spread contains exactly X lines of L. Okay. This X is a, a constant called. Uh, the parameter of the line class. Okay, so let's look at some examples so, so to understand the definition. So uh, uh, if I take a point P, take any point P of PG3Q, and I take all the lines through P, and uh, I call that set of lines star P, okay? And uh, we claim that star P is a Cameron liberal line class of parameter one. Uh, and uh, you can see 
uh, this uh, as follows. So you take any spread, and uh, since uh, the spread lines, they should cover water point. So uh, there must be a spread line through P, okay? So that line is inside star P also. And uh, so uh, can you have like uh, two lines in common, like uh, this spread? The answer is no, because uh, uh, any two lines in star P, they meet uh, at P, right? But uh, any two lines in a spread, uh, they are parallel. So, uh, so that's the reason why any spread uh, intersect star P in exactly one line, okay? And uh, similarly, you can construct uh, uh, another example of a Cameron liberal line class with the x equal to one. Namely, uh, you take a, a plane pi and you take all the lines contained, completely contained in pi. And uh, you call that set line pi. And uh, that's a Cameron liberal line class with x. Uh, equals one, okay? And uh, you can get examples uh, by taking a union, star P union nine pi, uh, where P is not in pi, okay? And uh, this will give you examples with X uh, equals two, okay? And you can take complements of uh, the above line classes. You, you will get, uh, and all these examples are so-called uh, trivial examples, okay? And uh, why uh, are cameron Liebler line classes interesting? Uh, so uh, Cameron and Liebler, they first define uh, these uh, special uh, sets of lines because they were studying uh, uh, a problem about like which uh, subgroup of uh, I think a PGL4Q, which subgroup of PG, uh, PGL4Q such that it has uh, the same number of uh, point orbit as the same as the number of uh, uh, line orbits. Okay. So that's the uh, reason they define this. But later on, uh, these objects uh, find uh, connections to many other uh, combinatorial objects, okay? So for example, uh, strongly regular graphs and uh, tight sets and uh, also partial different sets, okay? And also uh, Boolean functions, uh, Boolean degree one functions in the Grassmann graphs, okay? So uh, uh, what's the main problem here? So the main problem is uh, I give you a parameter X, can you decide? Uh, whether there exists a cameron liver line class with parameter X. Since we can take complement, so we can restrict our, our attention to uh, those X between one and uh, Q square plus one over two, okay? So that's the uh, main problem, okay? And uh, uh, so, so uh, there are usually two or three aspects of uh, uh, the problem. Uh, one can construct uh, examples, uh, or one could also show non-existence, right? So uh, uh, Peter Cameron and uh, Bob Liebler, they conjectured uh, in 1982, uh, they conjectured the trivial examples, namely uh, those I mentioned here, okay? x equal to y, x equal to two, x, uh, I mean the star p, line pi, and the, and the union and the complements. They, these are the so-called trivial examples. And uh, they conjecture the trivial examples are the only cameron liver line classes. That's in 1982. And they could show that uh, the conjecture is true when q is two, okay? Pantilla, Tim Pantilla, uh, who was uh, a PhD student uh, at that time, uh, like uh, 1986 to probably 89-ish. Uh, 
uh, with uh, Peter Cameron. Uh, so he uh, provided some supporting evidence for the conjecture by Cameron and Libler. So he could show that if uh, Q is uh, bigger than or equal to three, then X cannot be three. So there are no Cameron liberal line classes with X equals uh, three, okay? And, uh, but uh, uh, so uh, Cameron and Libler were wrong about uh, the existence uh, of these objects. So uh, first counter example was constructed uh, in PG33 by Keldon George in 1999. And the parameter is, uh, uh, so this X is five. So uh, you see a uh, uh, Pantilla proved X cannot be uh, three if Q big than equal to three, but X could be five, okay? So, so uh, George constructed uh, one example. Then, uh, then uh, Broom and uh, George. So Aidan Broom was uh, uh, Keldon George's PhD advisor. So they could uh, generalize uh, the single example found by George into an infinite family. So the infinite family has a, a parameter X equals uh, Q squared plus one over two, okay? And uh, so this is a, a Brun George construction from 1999, okay? And uh, you, could, you could do some modification of uh, this uh, Brun George construction uh, like uh, you, you take out some lines and put in some lines. And uh, this is what uh, Gavaluk uh, and Pantilla, uh, Matt King Pantilla did. And also Cosidente and uh, uh, Pavesi, okay? So, so there are quite a few papers uh, from uh, 2017, 18, 19. But, but these all have the same parameter. Okay, x equals uh, q squared plus one over two. Okay, so in 2015, uh, Taofeng, Momihara, and myself, we constructed uh, uh, camera neighbor line classes with the parameter q squared minus one over two. And th this was also uh, obtained independently by uh, Yang Dabo, Imaya, Mish, and uh, Rogers, okay, uh, at about the same time. But remember, th these infinite families, they only work for Q an odd prime power because the parameter is uh, either Q squared plus one over two or Q squared minus one over two. Okay? Uh, there are many uh, sporadic examples okay, found by computer search. For example, uh, by Morgan Rogers, so basically Morgan Rogers, he wrote a, a PGD thesis on these objects. Uh, so he found, uh, say, uh, two examples in PG332. Uh, so when Q is a two power, uh, we have less examples. Okay, so uh, uh, there was an example in PG34 with parameter uh, X equals seven. Uh, then uh, in uh, uh, PG332, uh, there were two examples found by Rogers. So we are going to generalize uh, these last two examples by Morgan Rogers into an infinite family. That's what we did uh, in this paper. Okay. Uh, on the non-existent side, on the non-existent side, uh, we have uh, uh, I already mentioned the result by Pantina, and uh, then uh, probably the best uh, result uh, in terms of non-existence is by Mish from uh, uh, 2014. So he proved that uh, if X is a bigger than two and less than or equal to a constant times uh, Q to the uh, four over three, so it's like a Q to the 1.333, okay? Uh, 
then uh, in that range, you cannot find uh, uh, a Cameron Lieber line class with a uh, parameter X if X is in that range. Uh, I also want to mention a uh, uh, congruence uh, proved by Gavlu and uh, Mish. Okay, so this uh, congruence is also uh, uh, quite powerful. Okay, in terms of uh, uh, eliminating uh, existence of, uh, uh, I mean, eliminating Cameron Lieber line classes with a parameter X. So, so this is a table. So from the table, basically you can see uh, roughly half of the feasible parameters can be ruled out by uh, uh, by this congress. Okay. So, uh, uh, so what did we do recently? So what we did, uh, we we constructed a new infinite family of uh, Cameron liberal line classes in PG three Q. Uh, with a parameter x uh, equals uh, q plus one quantity square over three. And uh, of course we require q to be congruent to two modulus three. Okay, so the, the parameter is new. So uh, we uh, so we know the, the infinite family is new, okay? I mean, if you construct a cameron lieber line class with a parameter q square plus one over two, then you need to uh, like, a, Justify whether the the, the Cameron Lieber line class is, is uh, equivalent to old ones or not. But since in our case the parameter is completely new, okay. Uh, Q. So in in particular, this Q can be even, okay. So Q can be two to the some odd power, okay. Two to so like a two to the third, two to the fifth, and so on. Okay, and uh, for, for Q, even this is uh, the first infinite family you know, for Cameron Lieber line classes. Okay, so uh, how did we do the con construction? So uh, uh, we did the following. So we so remember Cameron Lieber line classes is a set of lines, all right, uh, in PG3Q. So, uh, but lines in PG3Q are not. Uh, easy to deal with. So what we are going to do is to use client correspondence to map lines uh, of uh, PG3Q to points on the client quadric. Okay. And uh, so this is a standard. Uh, so you take a, a line, uh, let's say, a, so a line uh, is a, a two-dimensional a vector space, so you can pick uh, U and V, the form a, a base for this two-dimensional space, and then you map to uh, you map to a point in PG five Q. Okay, so P one two, P three four. These are uh, plug coordinates. Okay, and uh, so you map lines of PG three Q to points of PG5Q. Then you find out that the image, uh, the, you collect all the point, the image points, okay? And you, you find that they all lie on a quadric, namely this hyperbolic quadric, uh, uh, X1 times X2 plus X3, X4 plus X5. Uh, so this hyperbolic quadric. And uh, moreover, uh, this is a bijection. So uh, basically, this map theta is a bijection between the lines of PG3Q and the points of Q plus 5Q. So Q plus 5Q uh, is the hyperbolic quadric, okay? And, uh, and it's called, so this map is called the Klein correspondence. So we want to construct a special set of lines in PG3Q. Now the problem becomes you want to construct a special set of points in on the on the Klein quadric. Okay, so what? So so this L is a say a L is a Cameron Lieber line class. So that's a special set of lines, and you take the image, you get an M. Uh, so it's a special set of lines. Special in what sense? So this is something called an X tight set, okay? 
So Cameron liver line classes map to X tight sets of Q plus five Q. So what's the meaning uh, of X tight? Okay, that means uh, you take uh, any uh, point in uh, PG five Q, you take the perp, so that's a hyperplane, it meets M in two values according to P in M or P not in M. So what is this perp? The perp come from, uh, so you have a quadratic form, then you have a polar form, bilinear form, and uh, this perp is with respect to that bilinear form, okay? So is that clear? So uh, uh, you want to construct special set of lines. I change the problem uh, into constructing uh, a special set of points on uh, Q plus five Q. So let's do a little bit more. So for each project point, I write down the vectors, okay? So each project point is a one dimensional uh, subspace over GFQ. So in this one dimensional subspace, you have Q minus one non-zero vectors. So let's collect all those vectors, namely uh, lambda V, okay? And the lambda runs through the non-zero uh, uh, non uh, elements in the finite field. And uh, so for each project point, you get what? you get Q minus one vectors. So you collect all those vectors, you get a subset of vectors D, and that's a subset in the additive group, uh, six dimensional uh, vector space over GFQ. So what special property does D have? You translate, so basically you translate this uh, hyperplane intersecting property, uh, you, you translate this hyperplane intersection property into a character value, okay? So you, you see a, a hyperplanes, roughly they are corresponding to additive characters, that's, okay? So you take a, an additive character of uh, the, the, the group uh, GFQ to the six, and you compute uh, the character value of D, that means you apply per side to each element in capital D and you add them up. That's, that's what we're doing here. And uh, a straightforward uh, computation shows that this value is basically completely determined by this hyperplane intersection size. So if you have two values here, that means uh, you will have two values uh, here as per side runs through all non-trivial additive characters, okay? So, so, so if you start with a L, uh, a set of lines, you go to, you buy client correspondence, you get a bunch of points, M, then you collect all the vectors, you call D. So L being uh, Cameron Lever line classes, if and only if your set of vectors D uh, has this property, okay? And if you are familiar with uh, the language of a partial different set, this means uh, this is a partial different set. And not only uh, it's a partial different set uh, because you need to pay a little bit of attention to th th this condition in the back. Uh, it's something called self-dual partial different set, okay? So to construct cameron liver line class is the same question as constructing something called a self-dual partial different set in V plus, okay? Uh, I briefly talk a little bit, what do you mean by self-dual? Which dual are you talking about? So if you have a, a partial different set, then per side D, this additive character value takes two values. So in the character group, in the dual group, if you take all those per side giving you one of the values, for example, this one, you collect all the characters giving you this value, and that's a subset of the dual group. And that subset is also a partial different set in the dual group. And if that 
partial different set is the same as D, then you call it uh, self-dual. Okay, so so I am not being very precise here, but that's the that's the meaning of self-dual. Uh, if a party uh, people from association scheme uh, background will call this a del sat dual, all right? I think it's called a del sat dual. Okay. Okay, so uh, basic idea of the construction is the following. So you, you want to construct a special set of points on the Klein quadric, okay? So, so basically you want to collect a bunch of points. So the idea is the following, you uh, prescribe um, what one of them. You assume the object you are going to construct has symmetry, okay? And uh, so, so uh, basically prescribe an automorphism group of, uh, so you take a, a subgroup of a PGO plus 6Q, and you're assuming that subgroup uh, is uh, the symmetry group of the X tight set you are going to construct. That's the, that's the basic idea. I mean, the tricky part here is uh, which group to pick, to pick, okay? I mean, there are many subgroups of PGO, uh, the projective orthogonal group, uh, uh, PG, PGO plus 6Q, right? Which subgroup you are going to pick? And that was given by the experiments but, uh, did uh, by uh, uh, Morgan Rogers. You see, uh, Morgan Rogers in his thesis, he, did a, he, he found many concrete examples by using uh, a computer, all right? So, so what we did here is the following, you take a, a, a model of the hyperbolic quadric, okay, the, the Klein quadric. So remember, so the projective dimension is five, so you take a six dimensional vector space. Uh, so six, the six dimensional vector space I took uh, is uh, going to be FQ3 cross FQ3. So where, where FQ3 is the finite field <clears throat> of size Q to the third power, okay? So I define a, a, a quadratic form. So the quadratic form is uh, uh, just uh, uh, taking a trace uh, from uh, Q to the third to Q and X times Y, okay? And then you can easily verify this is a, a non-singular hyperbolic quadratic form. To see it's hyperbolic is very easy because uh, uh, you, if you take a, a, a W to be C zero cross FQ three, you see a W is a totally isotropic uh, uh, subspace and it has three dimensions also. So it has to be uh, hyperbolic, okay? And uh, this defines uh, uh, the quadric, Q plus 5Q, and I worked out the polar form. Okay, now it comes to which subgroup of PGO plus 6Q to choose. So we are going to basically choose a cyclic subgroup of order Q squared plus Q plus one. So it's a, a small, Pretty small, or I would say medium size, all right? Not not very big. The, so uh, you take a C0 uh, to be the uh, subgroup of uh, uh, the multiplicative group of uh, finite field uh, FQ3, uh, and the C0 has order Q squared plus Q plus one, okay? And uh, for each element, uh, for C0, I define uh, an element in PGO plus 6Q, okay? So you send this point uh, XY to mu X. So you multiply the first coordinate by mu, you multiply the second coordinate by uh, uh, mu inverse, okay? And you can see this uh, map preserves uh, the quadratic form. You see the quadratic form is a trace X times Y, so if you multiply X by mu, multiply Y by mu inverse, 
So the result is still, if you multiply them, still get, give you x, y. Okay, so that tells you uh, uh, this map indeed is inside uh, PGO plus six Q. Okay, and you collect all the all these maps, and that's what I call the I C zero. So it's a subgroup uh, isomorphic to C zero and embedded uh, in in PGO plus six Q. And then uh, uh, this is going to be the prescribed subgroup I'm going to use. So you work out the orbits of this uh, subgroup on the points of the Klein quadric. This is very easy to work out. And uh, you will see the action is going to be semi-regular. So each orbit has uh, uh, the same length. Uh, so it's q squared plus q plus one, and uh, there are q squared plus one orbits. So uh, you can actually list the orbits. Uh, I mean, the orbits look like this. So what are we going to do? We are going to choose x orbits, okay? So we're going to choose x orbits to form uh, a Cameron liberal line class, okay? Or, or to form a, a tight set, X tight set. So this X is going to be the number uh, Q plus one quantity square over three, okay? So uh, total you have Q square plus one orbits, okay? But you are going to choose uh, Q plus one quantity square over three. So, uh, I mean, if you, if you choose a Q square plus one over two orbits, that's a little bit easier to think about. Okay, you you choose like half of the orbits, right? But now you are choosing a, uh, this a strange number. It's a Q plus one uh, quantity square over three. So this took us a long time to, to figure out. Okay, so uh, uh, so the orbits are indexed by uh, this uh, one z and z is uh, uh, the uh, in in t zero t zero is the trace zero. Uh, elements in GFQ to the third. So, so you have a Q. So basically it's here, the, the, the hard part from this Q square orbits, you want to choose X orbits, okay? So this took us a long time, okay, to, to figure out. And how did we come to the construction? We analyzed uh, the examples found by Morgan Rogers. So Morgan Rogers provided us uh, uh, quite a few examples, and uh, from those examples, we saw how to do this uh, in general. Okay, and uh, this part is very difficult to understand because uh, uh, this went through many iterations. So, uh, uh, so I can tell you uh, this: uh, you wouldn't believe that's how we found this uh, uh, in the beginning. You right. So what did we do? So we uh, take a multi-set D1. So the multi-set, the support are uh, in GFQ to the third, okay? Uh, actually multiplicative group of uh, GFQ to the third, okay? So I take a multi-set define, uh, call it D1, and I call it, uh, define another multi-set D2, and I, I add them. Uh, I, I just take a union. Okay, take a union of multi-set can be conveniently written in group ring notation. Okay, so this this addition means uh, uh, group ring addition. Okay, so that just means uh, if you have uh, an element uh, appearing in D1 three times, say, and then you have an element same element appearing in D2 four times, then you add, you will get a seven times that element, okay? So if you do this two, uh, you add, then you find the coefficients behave very well, okay? And uh, you saw that uh, this, uh, I mean, you, you have some elements of uh, the multiplicative group of GFQ to the third never appeared, so those has a zero element. Uh, zero coefficient, then you have uh, uh, those elements in E, you have uh, coefficient uh, 
is four because E is a subset of T0. And then you have uh, those elements in T0 outside of E. So that uh, appears exactly once the coefficient, okay? And uh, what we did was you collect all the support of those elements uh, with a coefficient four and call that subset E. And uh, that subset has exactly the size I want. And I'm going to take a union of these orbits, okay? And uh, then uh, uh, we showed that uh, this is a Cameron, this is a X tight set, okay? Okay, so uh, so that's the main theorem, okay? You, you have this magic uh, subset E having exactly the size I want. And if you take a union of those orbits, okay, indexed by one Z where Z runs through E, then you will get a Cameron given line class uh, with uh, uh, this parameter, okay? And how do you prove this? Uh, we, as I said, uh, you change point of view from Cameron Lieber line class to X tight set, then you change it to, uh, you collect these vectors, okay? And uh, then you want to show, uh, you want to show a Psi D has two values, okay? And you do a hard, you do hard computations. That's what we did. Okay, so you want to show Psi D takes these two values. So let's compute Psi D, okay? So an additive character now looks like this, Psi A B, okay? Because your, your, your underlying uh, uh, vector space is uh, modeled by uh, FQ3 cross FQ3, okay? So, so these are how, how a typical additive character should look like, okay? Then uh, you, uh, you compute per side A, B, D. That means that you take uh, each element in capital D, you add them together, okay? And uh, what you will see is, uh, uh, so, so uh, inside, because of the shape of the orbit, you get something called a, a partial or incomplete Klusman sum. So this is a Klusman sum. Okay, partial, incomplete, because this mu is not running through the whole field. It's a running subgroup through a, a subgroup of the field. So inside is the incomplete uh, uh, Klusman sum, and then you add a bunch of incomplete uh, Klusman sum. So we know, I mean, uh, if I give you an incomplete Klusman sum, you, if you want to evaluate uh, this, some exactly, that's very difficult. Uh, and how could we succeed here? That's because you're adding, you're adding a bunch of incomplete Klusman and sum. And then you, you, uh, you do this computation is uh, non-trivial uh, computation. Okay, so uh, you change from uh, Klusman sum by using Fourier, Fourier inversion, you uh, change into Gauss sums. So it's a product of two Gauss sums, then you add up a bunch of Gauss sums. So, so this is a very difficult uh, computations and uh, Koji Momihara uh, is an expert uh, computing this, okay? So uh, uh, we, we, we did quite a bit of hard computations here. And uh, in the end, everything came out all right, okay, everything came out all right and, and you get exactly these two values you, 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 you wanted, okay? So that's how uh, we prove the theorem, okay? So this choice of E is, is good for us. Uh, so the next thing we did, uh, how much time do I have? Uh, the chair of the session? Uh, you have about uh, 10 minutes, 10, 15. Oh, okay, sure. Okay, I, I should be able to finish. So the next thing we did was the following. You see, we started by prescribing uh, an automorphism. So that means that this uh, uh, X type set M uh, you constructed naturally has this 
uh, semi group, uh, namely a secret group of order Q squared plus Q plus one, okay? So we want to see it has an extra semi group or not, okay? So, uh, so I mean, extra symmetry. So the answer is we, 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 we did this, we computed. So you have uh, this uh, uh, three, okay? And this three is expected because uh, this three is really just the frabbiness from uh, uh, in, in uh, FQ three over FQ, okay? So that's uh, an order three symmetry. You see you are, you are adding a bunch of uh, roots of unity and in the end you get integers, all right? So that means uh, you have uh, some frobbiness going on there, <laughs> okay? And uh, so that's the expected here, okay? And this, other than this, uh, uh, other than uh, this uh, cyclic subgroup we prescribe and also uh, this uh, frobbiness, uh, and that's all, you, you do not have more, okay? Because if you had more, then you could have, you could use the bigger group to start with. And uh, so basically we are saying you, you, could, you could not prescribe a bigger automorphism group to start with. That's, that's what this theorem is telling us, okay? Okay, so uh, what's uh, left open, for example? I mean, there are still many problems uh, about, I mean, the, 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 the basic problem is uh, uh, for which X uh, between one and Q squared plus one over two, uh, does there exist a Cameron uh, a line class with a parameter X? And uh, so far, you see uh, the, the infinite families we constructed, this X has a uh, order Q squared, uh, I mean, we basically have a three, I mean, three uh, par parameters, uh, Q squared plus one over two, Q squared minus one over two, and then this new parameter we, uh, we constructed Q plus one quantity squared over three. So these are all, in terms of order, is uh, they are quadratic. Uh, it's just uh, the, the coefficient uh, now it changed from one half to one third, you know, right? So a more important question is, uh, can you construct, for example, uh, 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 a cameron liver line class with parameter X equals to say a uh, uh, square root, uh, I mean, Q times square root of Q. So Q to the 1.5. We do not know any examples and uh, Mish, so now existing result does not rule it out. And uh, so, so uh, we have this problem here. So basically, you, if you are a little bit smaller than two, just a little, tiny bit of smaller than two, can you construct a Cameron liberal line class uh, with X uh, less than uh, C times uh, Q to the two minus epsilon, okay. Our conjecture will be you you will not be able to find the Cameron Lieber line class with the x less than uh, a constant times a q to the two minus epsilon for any fixed epsilon. Okay, but we could be wrong. I mean, uh, Cameron and the Lieber were wrong. Uh, we could be wrong too. Okay. <laughs> uh, another question is, uh, uh, I said. Uh, we constructed for the infinite, first infinite family uh, for even Q, uh, but the infinite family we have, uh, this Q has to be two to the odd power, all right? So do we have an infinite family when Q is a two to the even power? This is a question. We, don't know, we do not know the answer, okay? And currently we have only one example uh, with a, X equal to seven, and this is in PG34. And that's the example found by Gover and uh, Pantilla. So, so for example, let's ask in PG316, so Q is a two to the fourth. Can we find a, a Cameron Lieber line class with a X 
uh, bigger than two? We do not know the answer. Uh, I asked uh, my student to search by using a computer. They said uh, uh, it's too big. We, we, we cannot find anything, okay? So maybe uh, some, I mean, more, more computer work is needed here. Some, some party, some new ideas also. Uh, so I think uh, that's all. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Okay. Thank you very much for uh, this uh, very interesting result and very ingenious proof of it, of course. And uh, are there some comments, remarks, or suggestions, probably? Uh, may I ask a question? Yes, of course. Yeah, so uh, some, so you uh, you construct this set by describing the set E, which is somehow uh, described by the multi-set D1, D2. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But the, uh, I, I feel somehow this description is implicit. So is there a more explicit description or direct Yes, yeah, I mean, it, it, uh, it's not really implicit, it's just uh, difficult uh -huh. to understand. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. Yeah, yeah. As I said, the first version we came up is more mm. explicit, but mm. the description is harder to, to say. Uh, like see. You, you, see, you, see. You, you need to define this, define that, uh, then. Uh -huh. So you, we, we wanted a, a quick way to describe the yeah, set yeah. and we found that's the best way to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thanks. So, so, it, so it for the sake of exposition. Of, yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I have this, another question. So you try to merge some orbits of, of a cyclic group of order Q squared plus Q plus one. Right, right. Right, but the, uh, are, are these orbits all look alike or some orbits look different from others that is well, to I mean, say they, that the uh, world yeah i mean the all could be described pretty explicitly mm -hmm. yeah yeah but uh, uh, for example the uh, the normalizer of this cyclic group uh, mm -hmm. how, how does that normalizer act on the set of orbits that I don't know. I, I didn't think about that. <laughs> mm. uh, yeah. I, I thought there may be good orbits and some orbits are not so good. Or I, I, I wonder whether uh, there are difference between uh, good orbits and uh -huh, bad orbits. Uh -huh. uh, that I cannot, I really uh -huh. don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, what we did was we really studied uh, the computer data mm -hmm. uh, for like a, more than half a year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then uh, just uh, we, in the end, we could have saw, we could have seen the pattern pretty clearly. Yeah. yeah. What's going on? Yeah. yeah because for the, the, the orbit has length Q squared plus Q plus one. So this is a subset of uh, 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 points on the quadrant. Yes, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So the points on the quadrant, there are two relations, orthogonal or non-orthogonal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. So it could be understood as a uh, induced subgraph or the polar graph. That's that's possible. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So maybe, maybe some that it's some graphs, some some of the induced subgraphs are not isomorphic to the other, induced by some other orbit. Yes, yes, that's that's possible. We basically uh -huh. didn't. We found these objects, then uh, and uh, and then we computed the symmetry group, and that's mm -hmm. that's about it. <laughs> and we didn't look at the orbits very carefully uh -huh. after that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Sure. Uh, more comments, questions. Okay, Martin, please. So uh, I, I was wondering. You selected this, this subgroup, which has orbits of size Q squared plus Q plus one. Mm -hmm. um, but you already implied that X has to be Q plus one squared over three, I think. I mean, could you have found with the same subgroup uh, examples for a different X? Uh, 
Yes, yes. I mean, uh, for those uh, Q square with uh, with the parameter Q square plus one over two and Q square minus, I mean, Q square minus one over two, you could uh, use the same subgroup, I think. Yeah. That's what in, in what uh, in uh, Morgan Rogers' thesis, he could use the same same subgroup. Yes. Okay. So, any chance that there are even more examples for for even different axes? Oh yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, the the problem is uh, you see, uh, for example, Morgan's example. Uh, still, there are examples there we couldn't explain, so they might belong to an infinite family. I mean, uh, for example. Uh, I do not know whether this uh, uh, x equal to three thirty six. This is a PG three twenty seven. Whether that example is generalized or not. I, okay, I'm I, I'm sure there are uh, examples found by computer. They might belong to an infinite family. We don't we do not know. Yeah. Yeah, and infinite family that could have been operating under the same subgroup actually. Uh, you could just use the same subgroup. <laughs> Even, okay. Yes. Yeah. You see the the the, the q square plus one uh, plus, q square plus q plus one is a natural choice because the uh, you see the multi uh, the the x tight set the the size of the x tight set is x times q square plus q plus one. So yeah. that tells you this Q square plus Q plus one is a very natural choice for you. So each orbit will have uh, the length Q square plus Q plus one. Yeah. Okay. And you just need to choose the X in front. Yeah, like uh, yeah, yeah. how many orbits? Of course, but I mean, it's not guaranteed, of course, that- Yeah, yeah, it's not guaranteed, but uh, it seems to be a natural choice. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, more questions? Remarks. Okay, thank you once more. Let us speak. Okay. Let us thank speaker again. And uh, we have five.